Hey, this is Johnny Jet, and welcome back to my podcast. Today, we have a very special guest, my old neighbor from almost 20 years ago, Charlotte McCauley, now lives in New Zealand. And Charlotte, welcome to my show. And when did you move, by the way? Oh, goodness. Well, we moved full time. I think it would be 2014. 2014. So we'd um, lived in the Marshall Islands before then. So we moved here for good 2014. And you are not, news, you're not a Kiwi. Is your husband a Kiwi? My husband is a Kiwi. Okay. Um, it's confusing for some folks though, because I think looking at me, some people think I might be Maori. Yeah. And I think the Puanamu throws people off. And then once I speak, they're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, no, didn't expect that accent out of that picture. So yeah, I, I ethnically ambiguous here is probably I blend in pretty well until I speak. Well, you're you're getting an accent, by the way. Really? For sure. I definitely, I definitely, uh, can, words. I, I definitely <laughs> a, hear a slight accent. So I mean, so you've been there since 2014. What's it like? I mean, you're like in the best place in the world right now during COVID-19. <sighs> It is heaven. I'm, there isn't a day, and I say this all the time. I say it all the time. There isn't a day that I don't wake up and I'm so thankful and just grateful to be here. This is such an amazing place to be, great place to raise kids, and especially given the last few months. And so what's it like we there? I, I mean, are people wearing masks? <sighs> You know, you still, you will still see some folks wearing masks. Um, usually it's the elderly or just advanced aged, aged people, but um, we're actually prepping for a barbecue today. Um, I was out at a, at the theater last night with some of my girlfriends having dinner and restaurants. Um, Life is normal. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, I, I think there's still, we still have the QR codes where people will scan just so that you know where they've been. And there's, you know, we've still had some cases, but they've been in our managed isolation. I don't right. think we've had a community case in quite some time. So, uh, so does everyone have to download the app? It's not forced, but it's encouraged. I think after we had uh, the second resurgence, we had a lot of folks who did download it and had started using it quite religiously, which was really good. Um, and, and the contact tracing really helped nip that outbreak in the bud. We didn't have, um, it didn't grow as much as people were expecting. So we only had that lockdown for a short time and it was pretty much Auckland. It, it wasn't the rest of the country. It was just Auckland that was really um, having more restrictions, but you were still able to do most things. And are you in Auckland? Are you on the North Island? I'm in the North Island, but I'm about two and a half hours north of Auckland on oh, the wow. Tutukaka coast. Wow. So it's about as close to the South Bay of Los Angeles as I could probably find in New Zealand. Okay, well, a little colder in the winter, maybe. It is, huh? I've only been in New Zealand. Ze yeah. I've only been to New Zealand two or three times, but I mean, every time I went, the people are amazing. They're just so friendly, okay. down to earth. I've told the story before where I went to a treetops resort. The guy who owns it is a billionaire. He picks me up at the Auckland airport, carries my bag. I'm like, what billionaire oh. in the U.S. would ever do that? I mean, what millionaire would do that? And, and his wife oh, made yeah. me dinner. It's just, it, they're, they're amazing people. So down to earth. And um, yeah, you know, when I found out you were there, I'm like, man, especially these days, I was like, what would I do to live in New uh, Zealand? And it's summer. Uh, and, and it's I've going in the had, summer. Oh yeah. Well, it's, it's stunning. We actually, just before we went on the call, we had a, a rainstorm. So it was pouring down. So it's quite humid right now, but yeah, we're coming into summer. So it's fantastic great place to visit especially when it's cold and wintry at home you come here and you get to chase the summer um amazing fishing and diving it's yeah i, I it's hard to beat it really yeah. is it's well unfortunately we can't amazing. americans can't come down there unless you have you know a real good reason or you're uh they need you or something and, and you have to quarantine everyone who goes has to quarantine for two weeks there's no ifs, yes ands, and currently buts. Um, yeah. I think they did make that Currently. one exception, 
where they had that little breakout? Uh, I think for the Avatar crew. Oh, well, no. Um, no, like some English, some I, I English people we, whose mother was uh, dying, they let them leave quarantine uh, early and they ended up getting COVID, and, but they stopped it right away. I mean, uh, I mean, the amount of cases yeah. New Zealand has is way less than we ever had in a day. So yeah, so much so that I'm not even aware of that case. Like it, it's, you know, um, they do report it every night on the news. Every night they let us know how many ca new cases, if any, and what's being done. So the one thing that I, I really commend the government here for doing is just open um, communication, full transparency as much as possible. Um, and we felt really informed. And even now, um, I don't think anyone's really paying much attention to it because no. a lot of people are just getting on with it. And that's the Kiwi way. Just get on with it. And if it happens, then we'll deal with it. But right. um, most Kiwis are happy to, to do what's best for the greater good at the end of the day. I mean, there's some folks who weren't very happy, but they realize the importance of Right. making sure everyone's safe. You, can, can you leave? You can't even leave the country, right? No, you can leave. Um, however, if you leave and you're, if you're, if, and don't quote me on this, but from what I understand, if you leave and you're gone for less than three months and it's for personal reasons or work or whatnot, then you have to pay for your own quarantine. I um, I, I'm not sure. I think as of November, they changed it because they had an, you know, they were welcoming all Kiwis back from around the world. And and Kiwis are the consummate travelers, like right. they're all over the world. Sure. So we had so many coming back and that's where a lot of the cases were coming from. But I think the government really wanted to make sure they knew that you can always come home. Right. Um, but now I think that window is closed. So I think right. that if you leave, you're expected to pay for your own quarantine. And you guys might do a bubble with Australia, although they're saying that just New Zealanders can go to Australia and Australians cannot go to New Zealand because yeah. it's a little bit out of control in Australia is what I understand. Yeah, it's it's so hard to really um, contain things. I mean, right now, when we had the outbreak in Auckland, I was hesitant. My husband wanted to go to Auckland for a work uh, meeting. And I was like, no, <laughs> like, I'm just... I'm pretty happy in our bubble here and where we live in Northland. Um, I don't believe there have been many cases. And so we've had our own little bubble, but. So is everything open? Yeah, All I the mean, restaurants? Every, yeah. And I think everyone, and, and here's the other thing that I love about New Zealanders is the sense of community because there's only 5 million. And, and I, I will say us now because I'm now a New Zealand citizen. So I'll say there's only 5 million of us. So we, you know, you, you kind of pull together and, and we were always hearing, you know, we're part of this team, this team of 5 million and everyone is really trying to make sure local businesses stay afloat and spend their money locally. And whereas you would might normally order things from abroad, you try and just spend the money here to make sure that everyone makes it through on the other side. And any of your friends from the States want to move down or they talked about it or. Uh, I've had quite a few friends um, and, and, and they're still saying, it, you know, I think it's a special skills visa. That's all been frozen at the moment. I think the only way really you'd be able to get here is by mm -hmm. marrying a Kiwi. Um, and even then, I think right now things are just kind of suspended, but um, there's a fair bit of Americans here. I, I'm a part of a couple Facebook groups for expats and um they've got quite a strong sense of community. We were sharing how to make sure we were able to get out and vote and um, where we can find um, good Mexican food or particular cuisines that maybe aren't as popular here. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's amazing. That's it's awesome. amazing just how everyone's pulled together. I have two, I have two other American friends that I know of that live there. One of them just moved actually in the last few months. Um, I actually might even interview him about it. So, I mean, you married a Kiwi, so you had a, you had an easy in. But um, for other one, everyone else, so. what's that? Um, I guess I guess that was the easy way in. There are ways. I believe there's investment visas, and I'm not exactly sure of the threshold. But yeah, you have to have a certain amount of money, or in you have to invest or starting a business here. If you want to start a business and 
invest in the economy. Um, that's one way to do it. But I mean, Kiwi Ingenuity, they're, I think they're trying to start, and it's here in the North Island. There's, I call it like a baby SpaceX because they're launching missiles here. They've started to bring Hollywood here because Avatar has been filming here and, and quite a few movies have come to film and the they Hobbit. had to get special permission because of COVID, but they're coming here because they're able to still work That's and awesome. film as normal. Yeah. The, one, of, one of my visits there, we went to go check out where they filmed The Hobbit. I was doing the Travel Channel show and, it, you know, it's, it's such a beautiful country and no wonder why they film so many movies there and just the people are just so friendly and uh, the food is good and it's not that expensive either. Or, or is that changed? Ah, that's where I might disagree with you. That's changed? No, I think it's always, no, I mean, we were living in Los Angeles and right. I always had this impression that Los Angeles was this really expensive place to live. But for what you can get for a house here, um, LA looks cheap. Wow. I mean, it's, it's, it's still the cost of building materials and my husband's builder so um, I was shocked at how expensive, you know, remodeling and building nice. is. It's, it's a lot of things are cost prohibitive and food, fruits and veggies are very expensive. And really? I've always asked about this. New Zealand exports a lot of its, you know, prime produce and lamb. I can buy New Zealand lamb in Costco cheaper than I can buy here in the market in town. You, you know, I, I actually think back, I remember going to Darwin, Australia, where they grow all these mangoes. And I was like, I love mangoes. So I went to the grocery store to buy one there. It was like $4 for one mango. I'm like, what's up? And they're like, you know what? We yes. export them all to Asia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and around the world. And I, same it, it didn't make sense to me. Yeah. So cost of living here. That was my biggest shock. And even when I, you know, roughly I'll look at things. I'm like, well, I'm going to, subtract 30 percent just to try and equate the currency but it's still um shockingly expensive and and costco is actually coming here which i'm really excited about and i do believe it's going to change the consumer market here for the positive because i think most kiwis don't realize um, unless they've lived in the states or maybe in the uk the general cost of quality goods like here we pay an extreme premium and it's, it's great stuff, especially New Zealand made stuff, but a lot of stuff is imported and it's not always the best quality. Um, and so I think that's going to make some big changes, but here it's, it's, everyone really wants to support, support the small business, but I think that will still support the regional small businesses because they always have regional project products in mm -hmm. Costco. But I mean, so, it, I think someone had said it was like American, Americanization, but I don't really see. And it are there way. any American stores there? I can't remember. There's Starbucks, Burger King, uh, chain. There's a Burger King and there's the KFC. The Kmart that's here, there's a Kmart, but it's not the same Kmart that we grew up with. I don't I think there's Kmarts in the States anymore because I think they, yeah, I don't. They moved to New York. I remember. Yeah. Well, no, it's not the same I'm one. It's one from Australia. It's actually probably better than the one that we had when. For sure. Yeah, I remember going to Woolworths um, in, in Australia and it's like, there's nothing like the Woolworths that was here. Yes. And there's, there's still an incarnation of Woolworths here. I think our, our grocery stores are still um, owned by the same parent company, but there isn't, there's no Walmarts. Um, Ikea has said they are coming, but that was before uh, Costco said they're coming. I think Costco is probably big. Oh, and um, what is it? Oh, the famous donut place. It's been a what Krispy Kreme. Apparently, they came a few years ago, and it was a big hubbub. Not where not we live. Pretty much everything that comes is in Auckland. Like there's right. some stores. There's like H and M, but for the most part, it we're that's like the big city. That's like L A is going to Auckland or Christchurch or Wellington. Where right. most of New Zealand lives in places like where I am, which is considered rural. Right. Have you have you traveled around? I mean, during COVID. No. Not during COVID. And do, do your, but do your friends um, or do they just stay home? No, I gotta say, um, my group of friends and and here, especially we're a young family. We came here and pretty much just started our family. So a lot of our friends are in the same boat having young kids. And I think that once 
once they opened up the restrictions, you can expand your bubble to another family. And we did that with another family who had young kids about the same age. But for the most part, um, we stayed home and we were happy to stay home. I mean, granted, I, I accept my privilege because we've got 18 acres to run around on and wow. the kids can run wild and they can play. Uh, we didn't really feel locked in like a lot of people um, might feel right now, or, or I'm not even sure. Are you guys still in lockdown in, in the States? No, we're, we're not in lockdown. Or, no lockdown, but, um, you know, certain areas where they, you know, bars are not open and things like that. But I got two questions about that. So um, are, are you, you know, are you have to be stick, do you have to stick to a bubble, did you say, with, with your friends? That was only during um, our lockdown. I think we had was it okay. six or eight weeks where we had like a level four lockdown. Okay. And that was a short time. So that so, didn't last. So long. you can go meet with anyone you want. Yep. Okay. I was, like I said, I went to dinner in town last night. I went to the theater with some friends. And is the theater crowded? Yeah, it was packed. Do they, it was great. It was do packed. They have, is there social distance, physical distance, six feet apart? Nope. Nope. Oh man. Nope. It's like we are is... in our happy little bubble. Back to like, normal. That's like heaven these days. Yeah, and it's is great. It true and that... Like I said, we've got. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say, is this true that they um, New Zealand still they don't have snakes or poisonous spiders? We have nothing. There's nothing in the bush that can kill or really hurt you. I think we have some spiders that might bite, but I think in order for them to really bite you, you've got to lay on them or really but do something to them like to defend themselves. No, no. Yes, that's what I love about and, New Zealand. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And I know my kids, I mean, kids run around barefoot here, which taken has taken some time for me to get accustomed to because that's just not something. I'm used to seeing the no shoes, no shirt, no service type signs yep. in the States. That doesn't really apply here. Even adults, everyone runs around barefoot and I'm starting to embrace that too. But the kids <laughs> run around, go to school, they go through the bush. Prickles, that's the one thing my daughter complains about is prickles from the grass, which is everywhere. But beyond that, there's not really, and there's not anything that kids? can hurt them. It's amazing. Uh, I, my daughter is three and my son is five. Okay, well, and last time I was there, I think I had hokey pokey ice cream or something like that. It's like a flavor. Oh. Uh, Yes, and it's a big favorite. I'm. This may be sacrilege now, uh, but I'm not a fan. And goody goody gumdrops is another ice cream. Okay, that's I don't know that incredibly one. popular here. And it's essentially ice cream with jujubes in it, or what we would call what we would call jujubes, like really hard little gelatinous candies in them. But um, yeah, that. That gotcha. is a very popular ice cream here. Well, it's some of the best ice cream in the world, I would say. Okay. Which one's the best ice cream? The jujube ones? No, I wouldn't I wouldn't say the jujube ones. But um the uh, there it was on the news last night. I saw it and they were doing ice cream awards. I and see. they're commenting on New Zealand. And I think it's because we have such amazing dairy. Right. And even the milk. I wasn't a big milk drinker. It's a dairy is better here i don't know if just everything is better here because everyone's happier here but it seems better to me right um i'm running out of time but what questions do your friends ask you when you're when you're speaking to them from back home anything i missed uh well, well the the number one question i get is when you're coming home and i often <laughs> say i am home nice i said i won't be coming back even in a box or an urn like this oh, is yeah. this is my home I mean, oh. it's it's a ceremonial home. I, I still consider California and the States my home, and it's very near and dear to my heart, but I love it here. Right. Well, Charlotte, I appreciate you taking the time, and um, I wish you the best, and hopefully they'll let Americans back down there, and I will come down, and uh, my kids will play with your kids. Yes, bring the whole family. we got lots of room. We love guests. We don't get them that often because we're as far away from the States as you can get, but bring them all. We've got paddle boards. We've got a boat. We love to go fishing, awesome. diving. So come on out, bring right. them on out. We'd well, love to see you. All right. Well, thank you. And um, good luck or have fun. 
I, I guess you should be wishing me luck. <laughs> yes. May the odds be in your favor. <laughs> Thank you.